Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of A Splash of Paint. 60 colourful minutes of all the latest tips, tricks and techniques brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Let's kick things off by taking a closer look at what's coming up on today's packed programme. We'll be taking a closer look at what happens when all the leaves have disappeared in the concluding part of our Trees Through the Seasons feature. We shine the introducing spotlight on the wonderful work of versatile SAA professional artist Denise Allen. Jeff Kerzer returns to share his top tips for achieving picture-perfect results. And popular artist Marilyn Alice is on hand to give us another one of her inspirational Try Your Hand At projects. So let's get started, settle back for the concluding part of our Trees Through the Seasons feature. Let's look at a few simple techniques to help you paint trees in winter and capture what happens when all the leaves have disappeared and their beautiful bare structure is revealed. I've got all my colours and my watercolour paper ready for action, folks. I'll start off by mixing up a few basic colours. I've got a size 8 round brush and I'm just going to use the shadow side of the winter tree. So we're going to go for natural grey and a little bit of burnt sienna. People often say to me that trees aren't brown, but I mean they, they tend to be a grey brown or a grey green or something like that. So don't use brown as such, but use a grey brown. That's a really dark shadow side of the tree. Nice clean brush. And then use natural yellow, which is a sandy colour. Much paler, and that'll give you the light side of the tree. It's always good to get a bit of kitchen roll. And I'm just going to go for the dark colour first. And paint the tree in the direction it grows. Work your way up. If, if we have the right is the dark and the left is the light, and we'll just go up and we'll just basically paint in a thick to thin line. Now, can you see the brush is pointing down? And I'm just going to make it go nice and thin at the end and then drop in a couple of extra branches. Again, this is just the darker side of the tree. There we go. So that's got nice and thin. Clean brush. Then go for the pale natural yellow, which you want to paint out of the darker colour. I'll just keep topping that colour up there. And we'll follow the shapes that we've already painted. Now if you keep working on the edge of the grey until it blends in to the actual area. There you go, so it almost disappears away there. A useful trick to clean your brush and give it a bit of a squeeze. Squeeze it through your fingers and where the branches connect, lay it flat and just lift out a few highlights to the tree. Squeeze it and get them overlapping. This brings the branches from the centre of the tree as opposed to just the uh, edges if you like. And then I'll change brushes going for a rigger brush, a rigger being a long pointy one to make sure the dark colour is the one you're going to use to start with. And then we're going to connect one or two branches coming out of the ones we've just done. Finer branches, again, thick to thin. That's quite important there. It does help with the branches to have less paint on your brush. It's easier to control it. Now, the thing you should be working on practising with the trees is the way that you flick the brush away at the end because that is the biggest problem what I see people face. And a few ways to work on that is to put lots of pressure on to start with and gradually lift it off the paper as you get towards the tip. If you struggle to do this still, if you don't get that nice kind of fade away at the end, what you can do is just use your finger every so often and just lightly smudge the end of the branches, make sure the branches work into the tree. So you can see it's looking like a dead tree at this stage. Um, because I'm right-handed, you tend to find that you paint right-handed winter trees. So quite often, if you're at home in a studio, you've turned the board upside down and worked towards you. That's a good way to do it. Branches go in all sorts of directions. As long as they go from thick to thin, you'll be almost there. Now, even a winter tree can look dead. To put life back into the tree, you can paint in the really fine branches 
and just a few random leaves on the tree. So if you use one of my trained texture brushes, I'm using the medium one there, clean it, just make sure it's almost dry. And use a bit of a burnt sienna colour, so I'm just using a, a pale to medium burnt sienna. And I'm going to put a little bit of grey with it, just so it's not quite as orange. So it's giving me something like that colour there. I'm going to take most of it off and give it a bit of a stipple. Now what I'm looking for is the nice spiky hairs on the top of the brush. Can you see how that's all very spiky there? Very dry. And practice before you do it on your actual painting. You kind of flick with the long hairs downwards towards the centre. And you just put that little bit of a mist over the top of the tree. So I'm, I'm holding the tip of the brush almost and I'm just lightly stroking it in, putting very, very little pressure on. And it's giving a bit of a glow or a haze to the tree. It works both ways. And it's putting the fine branches on. And of course you could do quite a bit of this, but it is, it's like painting animal hair. It's a similar kind of thing. There we go. Very, very dry. I'm just painting a few little... Puts a bit of life to the tree. And then use the same colour, but more of a tapping or stippling technique, just to put a little bit of leaf on it. Don't want too much of that, of course. But just put a bit of life into the winter tree. Bit of a tap. And then just gently stipple. Put a little bit of extra life into it. There you go. And of course it would make sense just to use a size 8 again, the same brush that you did the main branches with. Pale blue, natural blue I'm using. And just put a bit of a snowy area at the bottom. Just to give you a bit of an idea. Clean brush, wipe it almost dry and use the water what's on the brush, just to lightly soften away and make it look as though it's actually sat in a bit of snow or something like that. Just a bit of a shadow coming out from the tree there. And it always makes sense on all the trees we've done to add that little bit of a old rustic fence post. And then just put the shadows from those. There you go, folks. Very effective, simple, quick winter tree. I hope you've enjoyed taking a closer look at the beauty of trees through the seasons. Remember, visit the saa.co.uk website where you can access even more inspirational products, fantastic reference material, and advice to help you develop your artistic streak. Right, it's time for us to shine the introducing spotlight on another versatile SAA professional artist. Sit back and enjoy the wonderful talent of Denise Allen. I'm going to show you today um, how I work on a seascape. And a lot of people have trouble with seascapes. They think it's a very complicated um, process. And I wanted to show you how I break it down into two different layers so that you can get the shape right first and then you can put all the froth and the bubbles and the fun on top of it. Uh, I start off creating what looks like quite a, a dull, dark picture, um, but I'm trying to create the forms and the shapes that I've got going in the waves. I'm trying to create some light coming up through here and I've used a combination of ultramarine uh, thalo turquoise um, as my blues with a bit of burnt umber in there and when I come to putting these light areas in I've added yellow ochre and white into that and then I've got white here with some of the shadow colours in so I've created uh, a form of the basic shape of my waves and I'm going to show you now how I continue that and put all the froth and fluff and all the exciting parts on top. Uh, I'm going to start off over in the corner here this is what I call a whooshy bit uh, and where the wave curls over and you get this area at the top. So I've painted a, a dark area to start with and I'm going to start to add the bubbles that come through that. So I'm picking up some of the white and I've got a little bit of my, my blue mix into that. 
So I'm starting off and I'm painting that through, just dragging some bubbles through along there. Then adding a heavier area of that on top, just to give where the light and the top is catching along there, just to give you that, that air coming through. Then I'm going to move on to this area here. And when a wave crashes, you get a flat area of, of bubbles, which gives you a white surface. And as those bubbles break up, they spread into big circles. And as that's dragged up, you get what I, I, I term a ski slalom coming down the, the front there. Now, on the light bit, that is a little bit darker. Um, it's, it's showing up against that dark background. So I've got my blues and a little bit of my umber, but only a tiny little bit. And I'm going to put these ski slaloms, as I call them, just coming down here. And this is where these, these circles have been dragged up and dragged out. in here and again just have a little bit of that coming down here bringing that through now as we come down to where the wave evens out at the bottom you're getting to see the lights hitting it more it's not in shadow um, and we're against the darker area so we need to lighten that up a little bit so I'm now I'm, I'm bringing this in it's not pure white yet it's still got a little bit of shadows into it a little bit of these colors into it but it's lightening down as we come forward And I'm doubling around the picture. As I go. Just going to push a couple of those out just to even the edges of them off a little bit. OK, now I'm going to go over to a slightly bigger brush. And I'm picking up my white here. Now this is where I've got a wave that's pushing out. It's, gonna, it's got some foam on the top here. So I'm putting this foam in and just dragging it across. And I'm using a lot of the side of the brush. So instead of just using the tip, you can use the tip to make some quite defined marks. Um, but if you use the side of the brush, you get a much more uneven mark. And I think that makes some quite um, exciting brush strokes. So I'm picking up a little bit of my blues in there as well. I don't want this just to be flat white, so it's a mixture of the colours that I've already used. I'm adding some brighter white into the foam here. dragging it across and I think part of the the key to this is not to worrying about it too much just have some fun with it see what marks you make with acrylic if you don't like it you can always go over it or you can wipe it off if it's really fresh so we've got some splashes going on there I want to have a few more splashes in here little pieces. Now I'm going to pick up again a little bit more of the, the blue colours that I've got. And just do a little technique that I term a bit of sideways scribbling, which is just putting on some of those textures that you get on the sea surface. So you get all those movements, but I don't want these white, I don't want these too bright. It's adding all those in. Okay, so we've got a bit more life going on there now. Um, and the last stage is I'm going to put some spray going on here. Now, to do this, um, I double splatter. 
So the first splatter, I have to dilute the paint down a little bit, otherwise it doesn't move off the brush. So I'm using a bit of water in here with it. So the first one I use as a, as a flicking technique. So I'm taking the paint and I'm just flicking. Now, I tend to use it, I'm holding the end of the brush here, I'm tapping on the end there, and the paint's coming off the end. You can control the direction of this by moving the brush around, but you have to have your brush fairly close to the, to the canvas. I've seen people do it this way round as well, um, and that works equally as well. It's whichever one you're more comfortable with. It is quite random. You get bits going where you're not entirely sure where they're going to be, but that's as it would be in the sea anyway. Spray going all over the place. So we have, have that, and this gives you a slightly larger blob. And the final little bit on there, same thing, but I've got a stiffer brush here now. So I'm using a much stiffer brush, um, and I'm going to spray. This gives you a very, very fine spray. and just adds a different sort of texture to it. So let's put a little bit of that around. Last little bit in the middle there. And there you have it. So you have the foam and the sea spray has gone on. But the trick to this is to get that underneath shape first. So you build your shapes and you have to ignore all the, the frothy bits on top. And once you've got through that, then you can start putting the fun bits on top afterwards. Fantastic to see how a splash of paint and great brush techniques can combine to create a sense of movement. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from Denise in the near future. Well, folks, it's time for us to take a quick break now, but join us in part two when popular artist Marilyn Alice returns to give us another inspirational try-your-hand-at project. See you after the break. <laughs>